Today I'd like to talk about space in design and letter spacing in typography. It's one of those things where it's kind of all the same concept, but it's just nice to see it done out. We're going to start with our basic, just 8.5 by 11. Uh, and name this one spacing. Okay, go ahead and save that. That way I can just hit Command S and have a saved file whenever I need it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is hit Command R, get my rulers up, put my guides in. I use half inch guides. Uh, that's just one of those things that you get used to using and used to seeing. And it looks wrong if it's any other way holding shift to make sure that my guides are exactly on their rulers. One thing we can do to ensure spacing when we're talking about space and design is to use a grid and snap to grid. Uh, some people like that, some people don't. It's really personal preference. When we're doing design, we want to think about how spacing affects relationships in our design. Um, I am actually going to turn that on. We can go grid, I'm going to show grid, and then we can go view, and then snap to grid should we want. I like snap to grid, uh, it's just the way I like designing. But again, I come from a design background that has a lot of software that has snap to grid. Some people in graphic design don't use snap to grid at all. So now I can make shapes, but all my shapes will snap onto this grid. If I make let's, oh, let's do that. Let's make a multiple of this guy. And another multiple. So this box I can see is an inch and a half. Right here is an inch and a half in each dim dimension. And then I have one inch between each box. Now this is a little bit odd. Let me actually switch out these colors really quickly. Oops. Switch out these colors really quickly so we can see. But these boxes are closer to the edge of the object, or the edge of the page, than they are to one another. So if we want these objects to look like they're part of a design that's together, right, if we want them to be friends, then what we want to do is to actually push them closer together. So I'm, if I was going to do them exactly the same, right, this distance here equals this distance here, I would do this, right, four grid spaces, four grid spaces. But I don't want them to be the same, I want them to feel closer. So what I'm going to do is drop it all the way down to two grid spaces. Now when we zoom out and look at it, those all look like they are together on a page as opposed to just being around the page. So we can use this the first, and I think this is the most important thing with what I want to talk about today, is that we want our designs to be friends. We want the objects in our designs to go together in such a way that we know who's important, where they are, and what they're grouped with. So if I have three pieces of information that are all related, then I want to put them like this. If I have a fourth piece of information that's not related, Maybe I actually do want to give it a little bit more space, but I probably don't want to give it more space than the distance to the edge of the page, right? That's odd. Like, you've, you've taken photographs of people where there's somebody, like, right at the edge of the frame, and the picture looks weird because there's not enough breathing room around the edges. What we want when we do designs like this is we want all of our objects on the page to have less space between them than this space on the outside unless there's a very good reason to say these objects are separate, they're not friends. So maybe I might want to do something like that. Of course I could bring the entire assembly over to and down to to give myself some more space to work with. And now you can see that these three are friends. This is also, you know, with the group, but I have quite a bit of space between the edge of my objects in the edge of the page. And this works in any way. We can 
do the same thing down. Sorry. Switching between software is always rough. Now we can see these three objects are friends, these three objects are friends, these two are just out here by themselves. They look odd like this. I could bring these up and duplicate the dimension here. Now these two kind of look like they go together, right? Especially if I move these further away. Now it looks like we have one group of three, one group of two, and another group of three down here. We can keep doing this. If I want to put those objects together, and I want to put, let's say, I just want to put these two guys together. This is a group of four, this is a group of two, and this is a group of two. These are all, these six are all more related than this six set is to this, right? This is off by itself, and I can make that even worse by increasing that gap. So if I really want these guys to be off by themselves, well, I can just do that and make them completely separate. Same with this pair. I could take this and make it completely separate. So anything I want to be related, I'm going to put relatively close and evenly together. Anything I want to say is not related, any bits of information, any images, any design elements, I'm going to give it a little bit more space. But most of the time, and these are general rules, most of the time I want less space between any objects than between that object and the edge of the page, unless I'm doing something with that, right? Unless I'm doing something design-wise with that. So let's say I'm doing... That's just Command D to duplicate across. Right, so these are all friends down here. They're evenly spaced and they're set away from the side. Uh, if I go to View, Guides, Hide Guides, you can even see it a little bit easier. I can also View, Hide Grid, and have even more space, right? So this is down and to the bottom right. The, this space is even and this space, right, these two, these two dimensions match. So I know that this is the corner that everything is kind of clicked into. This space here and this space here are different. So I know I'm not clicked in to either of those two spaces. I'm aligned bottom right. All of these objects are friends. None of them are closer friends than any others, right? They're all together in this same space. They have the exact same amount of spacing between them. And all of that, I'm going to turn my grid back on. Now, what if I want to say that one of these is special? Let's say this one right here is special. Well, that's easy. I can just use the rules I just talked about. He can go there. She can go there. Whatever our cube is. That makes this one piece of information, that would make this one graphic, that would make this one symbol, object, logo, whatever, stand out from the rest of the group simply by being outside of the dimensions we've set for everything else. Right, so the rest of these are all together. This one is off by its, lo by its lonesome. We could do the same thing more subtly, right? That's relatively aggressive. We could do the same thing more subtly by simply offsetting one of these, right? This one is now different. I could do it even more so by doing that. Right, so I've actually set this one closer to the side than it is to any of its compatriots. And we could make it even less aggressive by just doing that. But it makes that one different. It makes that one stand out. It makes that one special with just a little bit of spacing. Now I want you to note that if you get the rest of these spacings wrong, if these all feel arbitrary, Adding this little bit of pizzazz to get this one to stand out won't be noticeable because these don't line up and they don't feel right. So having this one sit out, if these are all janky, doesn't really work. You really do need these to be locked in to have the one that sits off look correct. 
Now, one thing we can do with these is we can also break their boundaries. So let's say I have a lot of text that I need a larger bar for. And I forgot that all of these have a white border. Let's get rid of that. All right. So let's say I have a lot of text that I need one of these to cover over this, right? Now I can just use this whole space as a text box. Or I, let's say I have a, a landscape image, right? Well, I can do that. Uh, let's say I want another tall text box. Well, now I have what is a grid design, right? Still using the same negative space, but I have what's essentially a grid design. And we can do this with anything we really want to do it with. Uh, let me undo those. So now we can see that this isn't really a true grid because we have some extra negative space on one side. We can either do a partial grid element over here. We could do a partial grid element in the center or we could make each of these a little bit bigger. I don't think this is gonna line up, but I'm gonna try it anyway. One, two, one, two. Nope, so we're still a little bit, and it's taking these out from being squares, and I really don't like that quite as much, but hey, for the purposes of right now, let's go ahead and do this. You can also just set grids if you want. Um, there are totally ways to set grids that might be easier, uh, and that also depends on which software you're using and what version of Illustrator you're using, or if you're using InDesign. So now we have a full grid. You can see that I'm a little bit close up top. So I don't want that. So what I want to do then is decide where I'm gonna have a non-standard element. And I think I want my non-standard element at the bottom. So I'm gonna pull two out of this and line up that grid. So now I can see that none of these feel special, even though the ones at the bottom are smaller they don't really feel special because the spacing between all my objects looks correct, feels correct. So now I can use this to kind of cheat at grid design, right? This is just fancy spacing. So let's say I want a headline, right? That's cool, I can just stretch that out. Dang it, and somehow I've gotten my white borders back. Let's get rid of those. See, I want a headline like that, right? And then I want one column of text. Let's say I want a second column of text. And then I want a big square image. Like that. Let's see, one column, two column. Oh, let's just have this come across. Have two columns of text here, two columns of text here, and then I could put another non-square image right here, or if I wanted to, like if I, didn't, if I didn't like the idea of having a square image and then one just off, I might go with two flatter objects there. Now, the nice thing is that none of these objects are more friends than any other pair of objects here. It sounds stupid, I know it does but they all feel cohesive. They all feel like they're part of the same design. But let's say I have two different articles, right? Let's say I have one image and then the text that goes with that and then a second image and then the text that goes with that. Well, how do I make them feel like they're part of two separate things? Well, one, I could use fewer boxes and not confuse myself. But what I can do is I'm gonna take a little bit out of this one and I'm actually going to delete some of these because there are just too many things going on. I'm going to remove one little space out of each of these. So that gives me a little bit more space here in the middle and I'm going to do the same thing down here. 
get rid of some of these extras. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Remove one out of this set. Remove one out of this set. Remember, these want to be friends, so we want to make sure that these are two units apart here, two units apart here. And then I'm going to burn some of that space up here as well. Now, I have thi these three objects that are grouped together, right? My two text bars and my image, my image and my two text bars. Now, they feel different, but I've run into an issue where now both of these are kind of attached to this top bar. I probably don't want that. If I want these to feel separate, I need this amount of space here to match this amount of space here. Now I can see that I have six units of space here. That's actually too much, right? I only have, what is it? I have five on each side. So I probably want these to actually come back a little bit, even though it's going to uneven my spaces. That's okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and make these a little thicker. This is, of course, not correct now because this one is wider than this one is. But we're not going to worry about that because we're worried about the spaces between things right, right now. So what I am going to do is bring the top of this down. So now we're four units here and four units between. And then we're going to do the same thing here, too. And I'm going to bring this quote-unquote image down two to meet it. Get rid of that. Now, if we look at this and kind of blur our eyes, we have this long object and this object are friends. These three objects are friends. These three objects are friends with significant negative space here in the middle. This gives us a very, very simple uh, grid design. But really what I want you guys focused on is not so much the grid, but using these negative spaces to group objects and say that these objects are all together. By doing this, it just simplifies things, right? If I have a bunch of uh, buttons in a piece of software that all do some version of deleting a file, they should all, all probably be hanging out together somewhere and separate from other things. We can even see it here, right? When we look at the menu of this piece of software, right? We have these two things which are very similar and then there's this little gray bar which gives us a little bit of extra space and then it says these two things are friends. A little bit of extra space, all five of these things are friends, so on and so forth. So we can go through and see that in a piece of software that's designed by very good designers, um, they are using the same thing that we are using right here. We're saying these three are friends, these three are friends, these are not, they're separated, and they're going to stay that way. Now, let's bring that into text. Let's bring that into type. I'm just going to put my name up. Oh. I accidentally capitalized the I. Myriad Pro, I do not want that. I want, what do I want? Oh no, I don't want that. Let's see, what do I feel like using today? Mm, we'll use our good boy. Meh, how about it's so boring. Let's go with Gil Sands. So we have Gil Sans here. One nice thing is that most modern fonts will look correct. It's nice. They will just look right, played out like this. If we want to be able to control all of the stuff, all of the stuff that uh, dictates where our letters sit, right? Like, why are these two letters this far apart? Why are these two letters this far apart? Why is this space this big? If I enter this down, why is there that much space there? For all of that stuff, we can go to Window, Type, Character. Pops up this little window. We're going to keep this over to the side. Here we have that same box as up here for choosing our font. We also have this lovely one where we can pick the weight of that font or the style of that font. 
here we have font size where it's kind of a random number simply because I just drug the box to a certain size. I can command A, control, grab all of that stuff and then I can set it to a whole number should I want to do that. These give me my other options. This A over A gives me this distance right here, right? It's the distance between this baseline. It is the distance between this blue line and this blue line right here. And the distance here is referred to as letting. If we hover over any of these things, it'll give us the words we use. I can change it just by bouncing up and down or I can type in the number that I want. So I can manually set this to whatever looks right to me. You can hear me rapidly clicking. Points as a refresher. 72 points is one inch. So if I move this, I can see that I'm one grid inch from baseline to baseline when this is set to 72. So baseline, baseline, 72. Now these are different. These are the kerning between two characters and this is tracking for selected characters. Mainly we're going to use this tracking guy over here. Also tracking and kerning can work differently depending on what, like these definitions can change depending on what piece of software you're using. So do be cautious as to um, what each one is doing. What if I want this my, my first name and my last name to take up the same amount of space horizontally, but not get any taller, right? If I, if I want to, I could just grab graves. Oh, no, sorry, wrong thing. And I can just make this bigger. Now I want you to notice that as I'm increasing this, the baseline difference is not increasing because I changed it off of auto. I can set it back to auto and then as I do this, it will actually go down, but it, it doesn't go down entirely. So what I can do is I can actually use my type size to fill this space. And then I'm going to, oh, see, I set this down to too low a number. So now it's too close and it's actually touching up there. Well, I don't like that. I don't want touching. So I'm gonna bump this out until it's just not touching anymore. And now I've used type size to fill this space. But now, much like things being friends together, I've used scale to say that graves is more important than Wyndham. Right, I've said that my, my, my last name is more important than my first name, just by virtue of it being bigger. We can also choose, and one thing I want you to notice is if I select text that has more than one of these numbers set, it will blank them until I choose an option and then it sets everything to that option. So I could set that to auto, 72. My other option for filling this space is like this. I can use my tracking here, bottom right hand corner. And I have positive and negative numbers here. I'm going to set a big number. So that 100 is it, I think it's an extra 100% if I remember right on spacing. So I'm going to set even more. And I can see that this S still doesn't line up with that M, but I'm out of selected things. That's all right. We're just going to type in. Now I know I probably don't need another 100. So I'm going to split the difference, put in 250. Oop, I can see that that's too much. So let's split the difference again. And by splitting the difference, I just mean going between the value you started at and the value you ended up at. So we're here at 250. And I'm gonna split the difference, so that'll be 225, because we started at 200 and we knew that was too short. And then I can look at this and say, all right, we're just slightly short. Yeah, just slightly short. So I'm gonna select that again, and I'm gonna go up to 230. Ah, perfect. So that is just about perfect. It might be a little bit long, I'm going to bring it back just a hair. Now, 
these are spaced out and it looks weird, right? Like I've done the thing I wanted to do, which was to make my two lines the same length. But now I have an issue in the fact that these don't feel like friends anymore, right? I'm saying that this is a word. All of my letters in a word are friends, right? If I say the lazy I don't remember this. Fox. Oh, it's the something fox jumps over the lazy dog. The something fox jumps over the lazy dog. Let me reset this. So, when we're doing this, we can see that we're using word spacing and letter spacing to say that all of these letters are friends and they become a word. We give a little bit of extra space, called, cleverly enough, a space, and that tells us these are friends and these are friends, but they're separate. And then we do something else which is where we use a T, or I'm sorry, we use a capital letter, in this case a T, at the beginning of a sentence, and then we use a period or some other kind of punctuation at the end of a sentence to say that this is all friends. So if we were doing this as mathematics, where we can use parentheses to say do this thing first, then do this thing, I could say that something, this word needs to be dealt with as a word, then we need to deal with it in comparison with all of the other things. And then we use grammatical structures for how these all you know, interrelate within the sentence. But we use the capital T and we use in this case the period to say that this, oh, sorry, to say that this is a sentence. So we start by keeping all of our letters together to make them a word. We add a little bit of space to say this is a different word. And then we use capital letters and punctuation to say this sentence is friends. Now we can also use just straight spacing for this. If we don't want, if we don't want to use the capital and if we don't want to use the period, let me get rid of these parentheses as well. Well, if we just make a copy of this, right, if we just make a copy of this down here, no one in their right mind reads this as one sentence that's a run-on sentence to down to down here. This is two separate statements, just using spacing. We're saying that this is two separate statements. However, if I take this, if I copy that, just put a space here, and paste that, even if I put it close, like normal line spacing, especially if I break up the line spacing, it reads even more like a single sentence. Right? Even though we know this is not a single sentence, it's just three things, that sure looks like one sentence. But if we use the things that said, right, a period, oh, a period and capitals. Oops, I missed my period somehow. There we go. Uh -huh. If I do this, that's the equivalent of putting those parentheses on and now I read it as three separate sentences. So we can use spacing, right? just give us this huge amount of space, now this is a separate statement. Or we can use those grammatical structures that we're used to, capitals and periods or punctuation, and do it that way. So let me get rid of all of this. So let's go back to my name. Now we've done something here. We've put these letters just too far apart 
and it's weird and our eyes just don't really like to look at that so I need some other solution to this some logos you will actually see them solve this by just filling the space let me get rid of this we could fill the space with a little you know little tchotchke could do we've seen lo logos that do something like this right we we're, we're occupying that space with some other little object uh, I could actually do anything in there and it just eats up some of that space we could do even combinations of symbols right but when we do combinations of symbols people are going to wonder why the symbols are different because now the symbols have uh, meaning and it freaks people out so see how this is hard to read whereas the other ones where it was all dots or all da dashes that made sense that is because our minds are trying to figure out what's going on with these symbols and are they important they are not so go away this looks right right we have friends these are friends there's plenty of space between them we don't have to worry about them we can make things one way that I would do this is I would increase this somewhat but not a lot I might go up to even out to about a hundred percent see that that's just about straining the ability to read that comfortably this very easy to read this line not quite so much it's it's getting just a little bit difficult to read so what we can do is we can bring this down a little we can bring this negative let's just bring that a little bit negative that's still pretty legible let's go way negative let's go negative 100 now we're getting issues where things are touching and they don't look good so that that's too much I've gone too far so let's put this back out a little even this right there's this is too heavy if we look closely uh, stop doing that if we look closely at this the eye here is too close these two letters kind of make a heavy weight here in the middle this doesn't have space to breathe right its internal components are closer to other objects than they are to the you know other parts of itself and we would generally say that we're more friends with ourselves than we are with other people so we want to make sure that we're maintaining you know the individuality of our letters so we do want to be cautious with how negative we go I think that's about as tight as I can go without this starting to look strange I'm at negative 50 on this and now we still want this to be the same width right that was the whole point I want to make a logo where I want these to be the same width well, now we have some other options we can keep tracking this out and just say screw it we're gonna have a little bit of gap and that's gonna be okay we can also do other tricks like picking if we have them different versions of this font I can use a bold which is gonna be quite a bit chunkier right? and, I, and I, again we need to be cautious with this because we're saying something we're saying that this part is now more important than that because it's just heavier but less so than making it big in my opinion and that that depends on the design you're working on now I can reduce this tracking until our s lines up with our m that's too far that's about right right there so we can also bring this up if you don't grab the entire line there was one space here it will freak out and get upset uh, so you do need to be cautious about that I'm gonna bring this way negative or not way negative just very close so now we need to look and see alright what's our visual space between these letters right these are friends these are friends this is too close simply because it, it puts these two closer together than these are right we can see that these are like one and a quarter hash this is about one hash between these two so 
we want to do. Pop that out just a little bit further. Ah, much better. Even that tiny little bit is enough to break this out and separate these things. I could go even more logo E if I want to do that. Of I could take this and say, well, I, I really don't like the fact that there's so much space here and there's so little space here. So we could violate some of our expectations of letters. So I could... Ooh, I forgot that space again. So I could violate some of our expectations. I'm going to put these a, a one hash and a little bit from the bottom here. One hash and a little bit from the bottom here, but a little bit more. I still want this to be more than this space. And then I'm going to do something that just violates everything. Command Shift O. Let me select the font. Command Shift O outlines my font. Now you can see that these are lines just like anything else. I can no longer edit this as text. So what I might want to do is undo that. And before I do something so permanent and destructive, I'm going to set this to the side. I made a copy for myself. Scroll in. Now, Command Shift O. I now have my, my edges, I like this, I can, I can mess with these. And then I'm gonna Command Shift G, that ungroups. So now I can select individual objects. Now I'm gonna do something really insane, and this G is gonna get dropped down to match the top line of all of this. Now, that looks super wrong, but it actually satisfies our grid. And I can turn my grid snap off so I can do some very fine motion here. Right, like This actually wants to be just a little bit higher. Uh, the reason this G doesn't want to be on exactly the same line as all the rest of this stuff is that there's a big negative space under this W. And it gives our eyes too much space and they want to, you really just want to eat up that space. So this looks a little insane, but it does get the job done if that's the job we want done, right? These friends all together, these friends all together, and it works. Now let's discuss some of the issues of spacing in between characters. This is pretty sta standard. We have very regular spacing in between these objects. The only one that really fails us is this W and I right here. Well, what can we do about that? There's not really a whole lot we can. We need the parts of this object, right? A W makes this shape, an I makes this shape. There are some things we can do that are a little silly. We can uh, see what would happen if, let's get to beat anchor point, delete, delete. Oop. See what happens if we get rid, dang it. See what happens if we get rid of that dot. Well, now we can bring this in a little closer. And it reads okay, right? This is fine. It's not perfect, but it is an okay solution when we have characters that don't really work as friends. Let's make a copy. I'm not really worried about the difference between this G and the R. They're flat on each side. They fit together. Let's make a copy of all of this. Raves. Now let's look at these negative spaces. If you kind of blur your eyes, or if we zoom way, way out, we can see negative space in between here. I prefer the blur your eyes method. We can see that there's negative space in between these. Some is very standard. This straight line here, this straight line here, the only real weird negative space is on the top where they kind of back out away from each other. This space has a lot of negative down here at the bottom. This, same thing, a lot of negative down here at the bottom. Same thing here, a lot of negative down here at the bottom. Most cases, especially when the characters are tracked out this far, this looks fine and nobody cares. But what if we want these to be tighter? Make a copy of this one.
And then instead of this being super wide, let's go, oh, let's get rid of this bold just because it's a little bit easier to see letters in their normal. And then let's do a negative 50. That's touching, I don't like that. Let's do negative 25. <clears throat> And let's do that same thing. Command Shift O, Command Shift G. Let's just get rid of this. I don't want this anymore. Now let's look at the spacing between these letters. So we can see that there's, you know, this is pretty standard amount of space. It's actually a little bit light. If we blur our eyes and kind of look at the objects, we can see that the amount of space between them isn't quite the same. Uh, we have a different amount of negative space. And remember, these are very odd objects. If all of our letters were just squares, this would be easy, right? It would be exactly the same as doing the grid layout we were doing before. But they're not squares, so we need to consider where they need to go. So what we might do is start with this, this is the weirdest combination, right? This V with these letters ne ne with these letters next to it. So what I might do is bring this a little bit tight here, right? because even though this is tight, we actually still have quite a bit of white space. Let's do the same thing over here. See, that's starting to look a little bit better. Let's bring this one in. That's starting to look pretty good. Now let's bring this G across. Now if we blur our eyes, this area here is just a little bit heavy, so I just want to come out just the tiniest bit. I blur my eyes and look again. And that looks pretty good. The weight of this area has gone down just with that little bit of extra space. But now when we blur our eyes, we have this big issue of this is a huge white space, even bigger than this negative space that's made up by this E and this S. So we need to consider this. What are we going to do with this space? Well, we're going to do one of those bad things, right? And this is only really worth doing when you're doing headline or logo type. I would not do this in normal body copy. You'd lose your mind. What we're actually going to do is go slightly inside the next character. And we're going to see if that helped. It's okay. If we blur our eyes, the negative space is much better. This is much less light than the rest of this. So let's go just a tiniest bit more. Now I'm pretty happy with the amount of negative space here. So what we're going to do is these two touching, terrible. There might be situations in which we can do this, and I'll show you one in a second. Those are called ligatures. An R and an A, I do not think that ever makes a, li a ligature, but we might be able to find out later. There are two ways to do this. One is mathematically, and one is just the easy way. We're going to do the easy way because it's the easy way. And I'm just going to remove a little bit of space out from between these two characters. I'm just going to take some of the space out here. I'm going to use this space here as a cheater. So I'm just going to make a little object that is that size. And I'm just going to put that where I want to split my characters. So what I can do now is I can take this, I can subtract. Whoop. Why'd you do that? Sorry, for some reason this mouse is left click and right click are not cooperating. There we go, I can subtract out that front object and it gives me this shape here. But now I've lost my object, so let me undo that. Make a copy of this bad boy and to keep it in exactly the same place I'm going to hold shift and drop it. It's a slightly faster way of doing this, but this is the better way to show you guys. So I'm going to select these two, subtract front. Then there is this little piece of this object over here. So I'm going to get my white arrow tool. Select, delete, delete. That gets rid of that geometry. 
bring this guy back, holding shift, select this, select my cutting object at the same time, get rid of that. I'm going to do the same thing. Select, delete, delete, get rid of that art over there. And now I've separated these characters in a way that feels consistent with the font, right? This and this feels consistent. Now, if you look, I've done this perfectly, right? We subtract it out using exactly that amount of space. But with these two things being very long and next to each other, these look much closer than these do. So I either need to go back and undo this or continue to slide these just slightly together. I'm going to do the second because I'm lazy. I'm going to slide these just the tiniest bit back together. And now I've gotten rid of even more white space. This looks correct compared to this. Oh, now we have this nice word that's brought all together. Look at how much smaller we've managed to get this. Of course, this is the one we didn't want smaller, but that's okay. It's for the purposes of this. You can get even more exotic with this stuff, right? We could bring together uh, the bottoms of characters. In certain cases, there are actually letters that can go together and are meant to go together, and those are referred to as ligatures. Uh, we don't really use ligatures all the time. Uh, it's just not often done. There are a few pairs here and there that get used. Let's see. And, oh, no wonder. I was wondering why these looked odd. And then for the weird one, it's going to be that. So these are the these ones are the most common ligatures. You sometimes have Fs as well, and you can kind of see where we're going to go with this. Right? You can see what's about to happen. If I bring my tracking even lower, you can really see it. Right? We've already made these objects. So what we're going to do? Command Shift O and G, so we can play with our letters. So we can see here that these are essentially already together. Ligature is two letters that are put together. We can do the same thing we did before of getting, oh, sorry, again, for some reason, left and right click on this for not cooperating. Pull out some of that, bring this guy across until we're comfortable with it. And that's a very nice little symbol we have there. We can do the same thing with this guy. We have a very nice F and T here. We can do our pair of T's together, but we're going to have that same problem that we did here. And we're going to have to yank out some of this. Fonts that have ligatures just already have them, and they will automatically do this, and they will automatically get pretty. The only reason we would do this, really, is if you're doing logos or if you're designing your own custom font. For the most part, we would never do this in body copy. Same thing here, except we can look and see that our lower area looks just fine, but it's this upper area up here. Now, I'm going to show you the more complicated way of doing this, just because it's fun to do complicated things. We're going to make a copy of our F, and I'm going to hold Shift to keep it in the right place. Then we are going to offset path, and we are going to offset path by, let's do a tenth of an inch and just preview. Oh, that's way too much. Let's go to a hundredth of an inch. That's way not enough. Let's again split the difference. That's uh, a little bit too much. Again split the difference. There we go. Okay. Now you can see that my paths are actually still on this original thing because this is an effect. So what we want to do is go to Object, Expand Appearance, and that will pop my art to the actual outside. So now this is an editable object on the outside. So what I'm going to do, just so I can see what I'm doing, is flip this around. And I'm going to put this right over the original letter. 
And then all I really want to do is use this to cut a chunk off of this F up here. I just want to cut this piece off. So what I'm going to do is get the section I want to use to edit. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to select these two objects. Get the intersection. Select this object. Subtract front. And that is going to clean out an exact distance away from this object. So now you can see that I have this very pretty double F with this split very nicely. I could do the same thing down here, right? Instead of having this straight, I could curve this to meet and it would look very attractive. So that's something that is it just worth the time and effort to get that done. Now let's give ourselves some space with this A and this E. I come down here. This combination is not oftentimes used, but it looks kind of cool. It's used in German, if I remember correctly, and it just has kind of a neat look. Um, it is this character here. One thing you can see that's important is we have more strokes, right? This would be a pen stroke. This would be a pen stroke. This is a stroke in here. We want to line, this is a little bit more than just shoving two letters together and clipping the edges where we don't like it. We want to make this look like one big letter, right? So if I was gonna draw the lines we want, we probably want something, oh, let me get this flipped around. We probably want something that looks We probably want something that looks pathed like this. Right? We don't want this extra little bit here and we don't want this break. See how this comes up and then comes across? We probably don't want that. We probably want to bring all of these things together like this. Get rid of that because it's a super ugly little drawing. And then I'm going to flip these just so it's easier for me to see the edges where they're overlapping. And I'm going to see what I can edit in here to make this look nice. So let's see if I can just bring this up. Whoop. Got a little bit of a sharp kink here, so I'm gonna straighten that out with this handlebar. Again, I have a little bit of a sharp kink right there, so I'm gonna give that a shot. So now that I've done this, and I've just moved this extra art, I just don't need the little tail of the, this A because I'm going to use the tail of this E. So I just moved it up inside, so when I do this next thing, it will work. I'm just going to add these together, unite. Now I'm going to switch these. And now see how I have this really clean look? Right, I have this, there's a sort of, sort of smoothness that works much better than the original characters, which I've of course deleted because I wasn't paying attention. A and E. And now I can see that there's some issues, right? This is evenly heavy all the way around. This is a little too thin. So I actually probably should come in and increase the weight of this section through the bottom just to balance the top here. I'm not gonna worry about it for the purposes of this presentation though. So we can have ligatures if we want them. We can ligature other characters together. Just be aware that there's some that are very common, there's some that are very not common, and there's some that just don't work at all, right? Don't take two ends and put them together. Uh, those of you thinking ahead will understand that two ends together just looks like an M or an R and an N. So be cautious with R's, N's, M's, things that when you smush them together, they're going to look similar or they're going to be illegible. Um, so, so yeah, just be cautious with that. You can get in a lot of trouble with that. So when you are working on your designs, consider how your space between your objects dictates how we see them, how we read them, 
who we think is friends, who we think isn't friends, the hierarchy of association. We're so used to this simple hierarchy of big to small or top to bottom, but association is vitally important as well, and it gives us the opportunity to work with more than one hierarchy. It allows us to have in-groups and out-groups for multiple things. It allows us to essentially have Venn diagrams of design as opposed to just this top-down structure. So please consider these negative spaces. They're vitally important for good design work.